counsel? Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Mr. Avila. Good afternoon. You've worked at Neverland for about five years. Is that about right? A little bit less than five years, yes. You're in security now? Yes. How long have you been a security guard? Like four months, five months. And you testified that the Arviso boys became more and more rowdy as their stay increased at Neverland, is that right? Yes. So when they first came there, they were, would you say that they were fairly well behaved? I would say fairly well. It was quick. They would come, get on the rides, and leave. But as they stayed there more and more, their behavior became more and more rowdy? Yes. Would you say that's a common pattern among children at Neverland? Objection. Yes, among children. Just, overruled. So the longer kids stay at Neverland, the more rowdy they tend to become, is that fair to say? Rowdy. Misbehaving, that type of thing. Misbehaving, a little bit, not a lot. Okay, you were interviewed about these facts by the Santa Barbara Sheriff's Office, is that correct? Yes. And during that interview, you had some problem determining whether the sheriff's department was talking about the Casio kids or the Arviso kids, isn't that true? Objection. Yes. Objection. Foundation. Overruled. The answer is, yes. Next question. All right, and the reason for that is because the Casio kids, who stay there quite often at Neverland, are quite rowdy themselves, is that fair to say? They would stay there a lot, but they weren't rowdy. Didn't you say they were rowdy? Didn't you tell the sheriff's department that they were? No, they weren't. Not the Casios. None of the Casio kids misbehaved? No. As far as this magazine that you said was found in Star's possession, I believe your testimony is he was standing beside you and leafing through a magazine with pictures of nude women? Yes. And that was one magazine, correct? Yes, just one magazine. Okay. Now, you signed a declaration in this case for the defense, isn't that correct? Yes, I did. And who prepared that declaration? I think it was Eric Mason. I think he first interviewed me. A private investigator? Yes. All right. Now, in that declaration, it says that Star had pornographic magazines. Was that a misprint? That I have seen, it was just one magazine. Okay. Someone else said they found one. Maybe that's why it's magazines. But you have no direct knowledge of this other magazine that was found? No. Other magazines, no. So Star, if I'm picturing this correctly, Star is standing next to you, and he's just casually looking at this magazine? Yes, I'm running the ride here, and he's about maybe like right here, this far away, to my right. Okay, indicating maybe about three or four feet? Yeah. And just casually looking at the magazine? Yes. Like it's no big deal to look at a nude magazine at Neverland? Yeah, yeah, well. Objection. Assumes facts not in evidence. Argumentative. Argumentative. All strike it. Sustained. Okay, laughter. So let's move on to the, well, before we move off that subject, is it? Did you know that Mr. Jackson kept nude magazines at Neverland? Objection. Foundation. Overruled. No. Didn't you tell the sheriff's department that you had knowledge that Mr. Jackson had nude magazines at Neverland? No, no, no. You're sure about that? Yeah. Didn't you tell Detective Vic Alvarez that this magazine might have come from Mr. Jackson? Objection. Misstates the evidence. Overruled. No. As far as this ride that was started by Star, you said that you were in a different part of the park? Yes. And you were operating the zipper? Yes. Didn't you also state in one of your interviews that the Arviso children were the only three children at Neverland during that time? There was times that they were. And then there was times that, you know, after a day or two, there was more people there. But didn't you specifically state that during this incident that Star operated the swing ride, the Arviso children were the only three children at Neverland? Didn't you specifically state that? I can't remember if I specifically said it, but I know that it was. It was them three that were there during that time. So they were the only three at the amusement park at that time? 
At the amusement park, yeah. Why were you operating the zipper if the Arviso children were the only three people at Neverland and they were in a different part of the park? Well, they were in the park. They, you know, they split up. Let's say one wants to ride on this ride, one wants to ride on this ride. Okay, well, let me go run this ride first, and then if there's, you know, one person, two other, the other two people are somewhere else. I don't know where they're at. Well, didn't you just say Gavin wasn't anywhere to be seen during this time, he wasn't around? When was this at? When Star and Develin were over on the swing ride and Star was operating it. No, Gavin was not, when Star started the ride, Gavin was not there. Gavin was not at the amusement park at that time? I don't know if he was in the amusement park, but I didn't see him there where the swing was at. Okay, so do you know who was on the zipper at that time? The zipper? What time? During the time that Star was operating the swing ride. Okay, you know what? I'm not sure. Okay, now, do these rides have keys that prevent their operation by children? Some do. And there are very young children that stay at Neverland, is that correct? Yeah. And the swing ride does have a key, correct? The swing ride has a key, yeah, I think it does. Didn't you tell that to investigators, that it had a key? Yeah, I think it has a small key on the left corner. So don't you remove those keys when those rides are not being operated? No. You just leave the keys there, and if someone comes up and operates them, you'll try and stop them, I guess? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Avila. I have no further questions. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. You may step down. Call your next witness. Yes. The defense will call Ms. Lessie Dean Rags. When you get to the witness stand, please remain standing. Face the clerk here and raise your right hand. Yes, I do. Please be seated. State and spell your name for the record. My name is Lessie Rags. Lessie Dean Rags. It's L E S S I E D E A N W R A G G S. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Miss Rags. Hi. Miss Rags, you live in the Compton area? Yes. And that's in Los Angeles County, right? Yes. Have you ever met someone named Janet Arvizo? Yes. And when do you think you met Janet Arvizo for the first time? I think it was like, 98. I'm not for sure. And what are the circumstances under which you met her? She came to Universal Dance to bring her kids. And what is Universal Dance? It's a dance, tap school, ballet and jazz. Okay, you may want to just put the microphone a little closer if you can. Thank you very much. You said it's a school for what? Dance. Okay, and were you working at that school? Yes, receptionist. What was the name of it? Universal Dance. Okay, and where was the Universal Dance School located? 6009 West Olympic Boulevard in Los Angeles. And you were the receptionist? Yes. Okay, when you first met Janet Arvizo, was she with her children? Yes. And where did you meet this family? She came up to me and asked me about classes for her kids, but she wanted free classes, and I told her that she would have to talk to the owner. Okay, she wanted free classes? Yes. And did you send her to the owner? Yes. And who was the owner of the school at that time? Paul and Arlene Kennedy. Okay. Now, do you still work at the school? Part-time. I go up and help out. Okay. And so for how many years have you? I received a note to ask you to try and raise your voice a little bit. Okay. Thank you very much. How many years now have you worked at that school? About 13 or 14 years. Now, when Janet asked you if her kids could go to the school for free, did you have the authority to tell her they could? No. And that was the owner's responsibility, right? Yes. Okay, you sent her to the owner? Yes. And what's the next thing you recall about Miss Arvizo? She, he talked to her. I don't know what he said to her. And Arlene talked to her. 
They decided to let them have some free classes. Do you know why? Do I know why? Yes. She said she couldn't afford to pay for the classes, and that she had been passing by looking at the school and saw some of the kids dancing, and she was interested in her kids dancing. Now, to your knowledge, did the Arviso children attend the school? Attend Universal? Yes. Yes. How long do you recall they're doing that? They were there like about maybe three years. Okay, so this would be starting in approximately when? 80, 98. Okay, okay, and would you see them often? Yes, I used to see them. Well, I was seeing them every weekend. Do you ever recall whether or not Janet asked anyone for money at the school? Yes, Mr. Kennedy, Paul Kennedy. How do you know that? I had heard. Well, he said something to me about it. I'll object and move to strike based on multiple hearsay. Sustained. Stricken. Would you see the children with the mother from time to time? Yes. And can you describe the mother's demeanor? She, she had control of the kids. She controlled the kids very well. The father, he didn't have control like she did. And when you say, control, what do you mean? Okay, we had advanced classes and beginner classes and intermediate classes, and she wanted her kids in the advanced class and they wasn't ready, and she would tell her kids to go on and go into the classes anyway. And I would tell them that they couldn't go, but when I would turn away, she would try to send them in. After sending them in, Miss Kennedy would have to go and pull them out. Okay, did that happen often? Quite a few times. Were the kids well behaved, to your knowledge? No. What do you mean by that? They would be all over the dance school, into things that they didn't have no business being into, going to the shoe boxes. Like we had tap shoes that were, like, behind me or either in the closet. They would be in the closet. They would just go all over the desk and just do whatever. Did you try and stop them from time to time? Yes. They always talked smart. The two boys especially. That's Gavin and Star? Yes. And what would they say to you? I'm going to object as hearsay. We're doing what we want to do. Just a moment. The objection is overruled. What did Gavin and Star say to you that you thought was smart? We're doing what we want to do. And what would you say to them? I would tell them they have to get off the shoeboxes. Sometimes I have to move them out of their way to make them leave them alone. Now, did this kind of smart behavior happen right from the start? I think about the second time they came, that's when I noticed how they were. And I mentioned to Paul and Arlene Kennedy that, these kids are out of control, and I think they're only here because the mother want to use you. I think they have money to pay for their classes. I told her that. I'll object. Improper opinion. No foundation. Sustained. Moved to strike. Stricken. Do you recall how the Arvizo family would arrive at the dance school? The only time that I really recall is when they came in with a new car. And what kind of car was it? It was like an SUV. Do you know approximately when they arrived with the SUV? She told us about, well, he told us first about that they had had a problem at J.C. Penney's, that the security guards beat. I'll object as non-responsive. Sustained. Let me just first focus on the car. Okay. When they first started coming to the school, were they arriving in an SUV? No. One day you saw them arrive in an SUV, right? Uh-huh. And approximately when was that, do you think? I'm not for sure when. It might have been like... You need to speak up. I'm not for sure what year it was. And did it seem to be new? It was new. Okay, did you ask Janet where they got this new SUV? No, I didn't ask her. Did you see them arrive in that brand new SUV after that? Yes. How many times do you think they arrived in that brand new SUV? At least three or four times. Okay, now, did you ever talk to Janet about an incident that happened at J.C. Penney's? Yes. And did she tell you about that incident? Yes. What did she tell you? That the security there jumped on her for no reason at all, and her kids was running trying to help her, and as they was running trying to help her, 
the security guard beat her to the ground. That's about it. She. Did she ever say anything about the race of those security guards? Black. Objection. 352. Relevance. I think it's impeachment, Your Honor. The objections overruled. The answer was, black. Next question. Did she say anything more about the race of those security guards to you? She just said that they were black. All of them were black. And did she say she was concerned about something coming out of that incident? She said the reason they hadn't been back to dance school is because her kids were scared to death of black people and that they hated blacks now. Do you recall whether or not Janet ever said that her family was homeless? Yes. Did she say that? Yes. Do you know approximately when Janet said that her family was homeless? It was after that incident. Did you believe her? No. No further questions. Good afternoon, Miss Rags. Hi. Hi. Now, you began your testimony by telling us about how Janet stopped by the dance school and asked about free classes. Yes. Do you know if that dance school ever gave scholarships to students before that time? Yes, they gave scholarships to certain kids. Okay. Did Janet ask for a scholarship? No. When she came in, tell me about how she asked for the free classes. How did that conversation come about? First she stood around and looked at the kids dance. I'm sorry? She went around and went to each class and was watching the kids dance. Did she have any children with her? Yes, she had her kids with her. All three? All three. Okay. And then she came to the desk and asked me about free classes. If there were any free classes? Yes. Did she know whether or not, were there any signs posted that this dance school was maybe a community service-oriented enterprise, or was for pay? Does it have anything like, you know, like pricing sheets on the wall, anything like that? Yeah, we have, we had schedules, and it showed how much the classes cost. Gave her a schedule. Where are those schedules? They were at my desk. All right, and you referred her to Paul Kennedy? Yes. And he's the owner of that school, right? Paul and Arlene Kennedy. She talked to both of them. And the Kennedys agreed to allow Miss Arvizo's children to attend that dance school for free? Yes. Were you present during that conversation that she had with the Kennedys? Yes. All right. And the Kennedys continued to allow the Arvizo children to have free classes at their school for three years? Yes. I don't know how many years, but they were there. For three years? They were free. They were free. Well, didn't you testify just a few moments ago that it was three years? I told you also I'm not for sure about the years, but she was there taking free classes. It was probably about three years. All right. And the Kennedys could have terminated those classes at any time that they wanted? Yes. As far as this remark about the children not attending dance class because they were afraid of black people. You didn't believe that, did you? Objection. That misstates the evidence. Pardon? Overruled. You may continue. My question was, you didn't believe that the children disliked black people, did you? No, I didn't believe it. Okay. Janet was concerned that that was their perception, that they might have a problem with black people. She was worried about that, wasn't she? No, I don't think so, because the kids... Did she express it? No, because the kids had came before Janet brought them back. She didn't know that her husband had already brought them there, and they had been playing with the kids. But when she came, she said the reason they hadn't been back was because the kids were scared of blacks and that they hated blacks now. Okay, so that was Janet, what Janet thought, but Janet was wrong. Yes. Now, how old were the children when they started this dance school? Let's see. I think one was about eight. Do you know which one that was? I think, well, the baby boy might have been seven or eight, and then Gavin was about nine. I think. And I'm not for sure how old the girl was. She might have been ten or eleven. Did Gavin have cancer during the period of time they attended the school? No. Was this before he had cancer or after he had cancer? Before. All right. Thank you. 
No further questions. No further questions, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. You may step down. Next witness, please. Defense will call Ms. Arlene Kennedy. When you get to the witness stand, please remain standing. Sure. I'm going to ask you to face the clerk right here and raise your right hand. I do. Please be seated. State and spell your name for the record. My name is Arlene Kennedy. A R L E N E K E N N E D Y. Thank you. Good afternoon, Miss Kennedy. Good afternoon. Miss Kennedy, do you run a dance school? Yes, I do. And how long have you done that? I'm in my 25th year. What is the name of the school? Universal Dance Design. And where is it located? In Los Angeles. And do you teach there as well? Yes, I do. Have you taught during the entire time that you've owned the school? Yes, I have. Okay. Do you know someone named Janet Arvizo? Yes, I do. And how do you know her? Janet came to my school with her family, her husband and her three children, when her youngest was about, Star was about five years old. And they came into my school and they asked my brother and I, they said they couldn't afford to take lessons, so they asked if we could give them a scholarship that they could take free lessons, and my brother said yes, they could. Do you know approximately when this was? Star was about five years old. That's the only, I can't tell you, you know, what year it was, because I don't know how old he is now, but he was about five, he was five years old. Now, were the father and the mother together when they asked for free classes? Yes, they were. Did you ask whether or not the father was employed? I didn't. My brother actually did talk to the family, and my brother actually made that decision. And did you know whether or not the father worked for Vons? I didn't know where he worked. Did you know whether or not the mother worked? The mother I don't think worked at that time. Okay. Did anyone tell you that they were homeless? No. Okay. Did they tell you they had no money? They said they didn't have any money. They said they didn't have any money. They couldn't afford dancing classes. Okay. And you and your brother agreed to give them free classes, right? Yes. And how long did the free classes go for, if you know? Well, they went in and out, because there was like a series of events. So, let's say that they would take the classes for this period of time, and then they were gone. And then when they came back, there was, the father was telling me about the issue of J.C. Penney's. And so they were back for a short time, and then they were gone again, and then Gavin got cancer. And so when, all during the time when he had cancer, I was up, you know, at the hospital visiting him and what have you, and then they were gone. So they were gone during that time and then after he got healed, they came back again. And then after, they were, they were back again for a short period of time, and then they were gone again, and I guess it was during the time of her divorce. And then they came back again. And the last time that I saw them, they were in middle school, and they rode a bike. Star and the girl rode bikes to my school from East LA, and they had to go back at night, and I said, if this is your best way of traveling, you know, as young as you are, I said, that's very dangerous for you to be going from LA to East LA on a bike at night. And I said, if you don't have an adult, you know, coming with you, I said, I don't think you should come like that. And that was the last that I saw them for dance classes. Now. Your description of the children being on bikes, was that after Gavin had recovered from cancer? Yes, yes. Okay, did the children tell you they had no car? They didn't, they didn't say that they didn't have a car, because they didn't discuss that. I know that while they were in the hospital, I know that Carol Lemire asked Michael to give them a car so that they can get back and forth to the hospital. I remember that. And to your knowledge, did that happen? Yes, it did. Now. During the entire period of time that you've described, were the Arvizos going to your school for free? Yes. Did you ever charge them a dime to go to your school? Never. And this is for how long a period of time? Well, I would say from star being five years old until they were in middle school. And did you ever learn whether or not during that period of time the father was employed? The father was employed, yes, prior to Gavin's being sick. And I know once Gavin was sick, stricken with cancer, the father became unemployed because he stayed at the hospital night and day with his son. 
so he gave up his job to stay at the hospital with his son. Now, did you discuss the alleged events at J.C. Penney with Janet? When Janet came back, but the father and I discussed it first, because I said, well, where have the kids been? And he said, oh, Miss Kennedy, he said, you know, it's been crazy. And he started telling me about J.C. Penney's, but when Janet came back, it was a different story than what he had told me. What did Janet tell you? Janet told me that the event happened in the alley, and it was some black guys that, you know, jumped on her and what have you, and that she said that she hoped that her children wouldn't grow up to hate black people. But the father, on the other hand, had told me that it happened in the middle of the mall. Object as to hearsay, the statements of Mr. Arviso. Sustained. And were you told that the children were not attending the school because of the J.C. Penney incident? Yes. Okay. Now, at some point while you were giving free lessons to the Arviso children, did you ever learn that the family had obtained $152,000 from J.C. Penney and another company? All object as vague as to time. Sustained. At any time did Janet Arviso ever tell you, we don't have to get free lessons anymore. We just got $152,000 from the J.C. Penney lawsuit. All object as to relevancy, without foundation. Sustained. Did you ever learn whether or not the Arvizos obtained money from J.C. Penney? Yes, I did. When was that? Janet told me that the last time. I think it was after the, when they came back to dancing school, she said that she had a lot, they got a large settlement, and she said that the only thing that they really got was these bicycles. That's the way she put it. All they got was the bicycles from J.C. Penney? That's what she said. We got a lot of money but the only thing that we got that we can show for it was the bicycles. And did you continue to give the children free lessons after that? I did. I did. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Miss Kennedy. Good afternoon. So, the information that Janet gave you about the J.C. Penney settlement, she didn't hide from you that she got some money out of that settlement, is that true? That's true. Okay. And as far as the time that the Arvizos were attending your dance school on scholarship, if I understand it correctly, there was a period of time that they attended, and then they left, they came back, they left, they came back again? That's true. Okay. And how long were these two periods where they left your dance school for a period of time? Well. Let's go with the first one. I would say the first one probably was, was months, I would say. All right. I want to say that. And was that around the time that, when they left at that point, was that around the time that the J.C. Penney's incident occurred? Yes, yes. Okay. When Janet was talking to you about the alley incident that you just described, are you certain that she was talking to you about the J.C. Penney's incident at the same time? Yes, yes. She said an alley? Yes. But in either event, she indicated that she was attacked and assaulted and injured? Yes. All right. Did you ever attend church with Miss Arviso? Yes. On more than one occasion? Well, it's the reverse. Actually, she attended with me. On more than one occasion? Yes. And the decision to give this family a scholarship, was that just a thing that you and your brother did out of the kindness of your heart? Yes. Did you ever feel like you shouldn't have done that? No. All right. And you've done that for other people as well? Of course. Thank you. No further questions. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. You may step down. Okay. Call your next witness. Yes. Defense will call Mr. Chris Tucker. When you get to the witness stand, would you remain standing? Face the clerk here and raise your right hand. Yes. Please be seated. State and spell your name for the record. My name is Chris Tucker. C-H-R-I-S-T-U-C-K-E-R. -E Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Tucker. Good afternoon. Mr. Tucker, do you know the fellow seated at council table to my right? Yes. Who is he? Michael Jackson. Is he a friend of yours? Yes. How long have you known Michael Jackson? Probably four, three years. Four to three years. 
and what are the circumstances during which you met Michael Jackson for the first time? What are the circumstances? Yeah, how did you meet him? It's funny, I met him through Gavin Arvizo, and we talked on the phone one time, but of course I knew of him for years. And we talked on the phone, and again we met, we talked, and we met in New York City, and we, from then, we met a few other times and went from there. Now, how did you meet Gavin Arvizo? I met Gavin at the Laugh Factory, and I'm a stand-up comedian, so I went to the Laugh Factory and I met his father. His father approached me and told me that his kid, he had a kid that loved me and he was dying of cancer. And I met him, he told me he was doing a benefit at the Laugh Factory. I told him, I don't know if I can make it, because I'm always in and out of town, but I'll try to make it because, you know, he said his kid was dying. So I met him at the Laugh Factory, and that's how I met him. Okay, do you remember the first time you met Gavin at the Laugh Factory? The first time was at a benefit. Okay, and what do you know about that benefit? The benefit was a camp for kids that they put on, they said, every year for kids that wanted to act and do comedy, I guess. And was the benefit, to your knowledge, for the purpose of raising money? Oh, yes, yes, it was for raising money, and there was, it was, I guess, to like, for the doctor bills and stuff. I don't know, something like that, but it was definitely for raising money. And who invited you to the benefit? The father, Gavin Arvizo's father, his father. Okay, so the father told you there was going to be a benefit to raise money for medical bills for Gavin? Yes. Okay, and you attended that benefit, right? Yes. Who else did you see there, if you remember? I seen, I met a lot of kids, and I met his brother Star. And it was kind of dark in the comedy club, but from what I can recall, that's where I met a few of the, I think it was Star and his father and that was it. Do you recall whether or not you contributed money on that occasion? I don't, not that night, but I did contribute some money, yes. And explain that, if you would. I was asked a few days later to give some money, because they didn't raise any money. They didn't make any money. So I did. I wired some money to their foundation. Okay. Who told you they hadn't raised any money at the benefit? Gavin told me, and his father, well, Gavin told me. Gavin told me. So Gavin told you they didn't make a dime at that fundraiser? Yeah. They said they didn't make any money, and they needed some money. They couldn't, you know, they needed some money. So. And you then wired them some money? Yeah. I wired them some money. How much did you send them? Do you know? It was probably 1500 or more. Okay, and you believe that was for medical expenses? Yes, I was hoping it was for that. Okay, now, did you see the father from time to time? Yeah, only with the kids. Okay, and where would you see the father? When they visited, I took them to Knott's Berry Farm one time. I took them to the mall a few times to buy them clothes and stuff. Those were the times I seen them, only with the kids. Okay, now, you say you took them to Knott's Berry Farm? Yeah. And please explain what you did. Well, I took them also with my son, went to some rides to make him, you know, have a good time. We rode rides, and that was, that was about it. And who, who was on that trip, that you can remember, every person that was there? It was my son, Star, Gavin's brother, Develin, I think my son's mother, and, yeah, that was, yeah, my son's mother, and David, the father. And who arranged that trip? I did. And did you arrange for transportation? Yes, I think we went in my car and they followed us in a car. Okay, was that an all-day type of trip? Excuse me? Was that an all-day affair? I think so, yes. I think it was night time. It went into the night, yeah. Now, you said you bought clothes for the Arvizo children at a mall, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And explain what you did, if you would. We went to, like, a sports store. They liked the Raiders, and bought them Raiders stuff, shirts and hats and shoes and stuff like that. And who was with you when you bought these clothes for the Arvizo children? The father. Okay. And, David. Did you ever meet the mother? I met her in, the first time in, in Las Vegas. Okay, and her name was Janet? Janet, yes. Okay. And please explain the circumstances under which you met Janet Arvizo in Las Vegas. Yeah, 
It was real brief a few times, because I was filming, and it was. I didn't really have a lot of time so it was real brief. So, it was just, hello, hello, because we was filming a movie the first time. Was this on the set that you met Janet Arvizo? On the set, yes. Who was with her, if you remember? I think David, her husband, and all the kids came up to Las Vegas on a road trip to visit me on the set. I invited them to the set. To your knowledge, who arranged for that trip? Was it David or the mother? I don't know. I think it was David, because at that time I never met her. It was always the kids and the father. And approximately what year do you think this was? I think it was 2001. Okay. I think. And they came to the lot, right? Yes. You met them there? Yes. To your knowledge, did they stay very long? To my knowledge, I heard they stayed a while, and they was, they was trying to get them to leave, but I didn't know because I was so busy. That they did stay a couple of, a week or two. I don't know. And you say they were trying to get them to leave. Who are you talking about? Your Honor, I'm going to object. Lack of foundation, calls for hearsay. Sustained. To your knowledge, did the Arvizo family remain on the set while you were filming? Only the kids, they came. The father, I think they came with the father, and they was on the set for a while, and then they was doing stuff around town, but they was on the set a few times, yes. During that trip to Las Vegas when you first met Janet, did you ever see the family again after the day they came to the set? Yes, I seen, after that day, I think, I think it was the day they came to my house, and I met the mother again when we went to Miami, I think. Now, let me, maybe, I may not have asked you a very good question. You're in Las Vegas, you're filming, and you meet the Arvizos on the set, correct? Uh-huh. That's the first time you meet the mother, right? Yes, uh-huh. Do you see them again in Las Vegas on that trip? Yeah, I see them in and out several times, because I was filming long hours, so I'd, I'd definitely seen the kids because they'd come to the set and they would be at the set, and I would, and I think the mother came a few times, too, and the father. So I seen them, but I was so busy. So it was definitely several times I seen them again, yeah. And did you help them stay on the set? I mean, did you give them a pass or anything of that sort? Yes, I told them that. I told the people that this was okay for them to be there. They were my guests. Okay, and did you consider them friends of yours at the time? Yes, yes. Now, after that Las Vegas trip, did you see the Arvizos again? After that, I seen them, I think it was at the house that time. And any other time I can't think of it, but it was at the house that time. Is this at your house? My house. Was this in Los Angeles? In Los Angeles, yes. Okay, now, why were they at your house in Los Angeles? Well, they called me, because they wanted to go out of town, and they wanted to, and they wanted to find out where Michael was, because they always wanted to find out, they wanted to find out where Michael was, and they wanted to go out of town. Okay, now, you say, they wanted to go out of town. Are you referring to Janet? I'm saying the kids, because most of the time I talk to Gavin. Okay. And? Your Honor, I'm going to move to strike as hearsay. It's impeachment. I don't think there's... Sustained. You'll need to be more direct about who's speaking. Okay. I won't use the term, they, when I ask you questions about who's speaking. I'll just use individual names, okay? You said the Arvizo family was at your home after the Las Vegas trip, right? Yes. And who in the Arvizo family was at your home? Gavin, Develin, Star and Janet, the mother. Was the father there on that occasion? No. Did you invite them to your home? Yes. Who did you invite specifically to visit you at your house? Star, Gavin and his family, whoever was with him. At the time, I didn't know who was with him at the time. David, Develin, Star and Gavin. Now, before Janet and her children visited you at your home in Los Angeles, did you speak to Janet on the phone? I did speak to her before that. Vegas to time. Sustained. Okay, what year was the Las Vegas trip? I guess it was 2001. And how long after the Las Vegas trip did Janet and the children come to your home in Los Angeles? It had to be. I was filming, so it had to be a couple of months, a few months. So do you think we're still in 2001? 
I think so. Okay, did Janet call you on the phone after the Las Vegas trip? Yes. And did you speak to her on the phone? Yes. Did, what did she say to you? I talked to her one morning, and I remember because we was promoting a movie and we was talking about something, and she started crying on the phone, was crying, 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 and, you know, she always said I was their brother, the kid's brother, and all that stuff. And we, you know, I can remember this phone call, because she was crying. And I was, you know, I was always saying, you know, everything's going to be all right, because that's about as much as I could do. And that phone call was kind of confusing, so I don't remember what was said and all that stuff. But you remember her crying? Yeah. Okay, did you invite her to your home during that phone conversation? No, no, that was another conversation. Okay, after that first conversation, did she call you again? I don't recall. Okay, do you recall whether or not you ever called Janet? No, I never called her. Did you ever call David on the phone, to your knowledge? Never called him, no. Did he ever call you on the phone? Not that I can recall. It was mostly Gavin. So Gavin would call you on the phone? Yes. Did he call you often? Yes. And I'm talking now about the time period after the Las Vegas trip, okay? Okay. How did Gavin get your phone number? I gave him my number at the Laugh Factory the first time I met him. He asked for it, and I gave it to him. Okay, and is there any particular reason why you gave Gavin Arvizo your phone number at the Laugh Factory? Because, I mean, I felt like, you know, whatever I could do to help him out. You know, he didn't have any hair. He was going through, you know, all this what they say, you know, he was going through, whatever. But, you know, he was a kid, and whatever I could do, you know, I'd say, you know, here. Was he going through chemotherapy? Yes, that's what they said, yeah. Did they tell you he was undergoing cancer treatment? That's what they said. This was at the fundraiser, right? Yes. All right, now, after that fundraiser, Mr. Tucker, did he start calling you on a regular basis? Yes, he did, yes. And when you say, a regular basis, like how often would Gavin Arvizo call you on the phone? He called, he called a lot. And then, and then, he called a lot. It wasn't my main number, but I knew it was, I checked all the time, because I was always different places. So I checked it so I can tell how many times he called. But I always called him back when I got a chance, because I wanted to let him, you know, just to call him and say hello. And when Gavin would call you, did you ever believe his mother was on the line? No, I didn't, no, I only talked to him. I didn't think nobody was on the line, no. Did Star ever call you? Star, he called sometimes with Gavin, yes. Okay, how about Develin? Develin never called, no. How many times did the Arvizos visit your home in Los Angeles? Probably once, probably three times. Probably three times, yes. Were all of these visits after the Las Vegas trip? No, they was before. I think one of them was afterwards, but the rest of them was before. Okay, now, now. The first time they visited your home, was that after the fundraiser? Yes. And that was after you gave Gavin your phone number at the fundraiser, right? Yes, yes. Okay, was that the only fundraiser you ever attended for Gavin? Yes. Okay, who do you recall seeing at that fundraiser besides the Arvizo family? A lot of young kids. A lot of comedians that I didn't know their names, but a lot of comedians, but a lot of kids. That was, and I was like the only, like, I think, comedian, known comedian there, yeah. And was it your understanding that everyone was there to raise money for Gavin? That's what I was told, yes. Okay, did you see Gavin in the lobby of the Laugh Factory, if you recall? I met him upstairs after, well, I think right after, right after it was over, I met him upstairs in the Laugh Factory. Do you recall, when you entered the Laugh Factory, if Gavin was at a table? Don't know, don't know. Do you recall if any member of the Arvizo family was at a table in the lobby of the Laugh Factory collecting money? I don't know. Okay, so after it was over, you say you met Gavin upstairs? Yes. Was anybody with Gavin? I think his father and his brother was there when I was introduced to them. Okay, 
And did you spend time talking to Gavin upstairs? Yes, I was talking to him. Is that when you gave him your number? I gave him my number and a pair of shoes, Nike shoes that I got. How did you end up buying Nike shoes from them? I get them for free from Nike Town, so I called them and told them I was meeting a kid, and I wanted to get him something, a gift. His father was there when you gave him the shoes? Yes. And Star and Develin were there also? Star was there, yes, yes. Was Develin there, if you know? I think she was, I don't know. Okay, so was the first visit to your home shortly after that fundraiser? Yes. Okay. Yes. And what was the purpose of the first visit to your home, if you know? Just visiting. Okay. Just visiting. Did they spend a lot of time there? I think so, just, they wanted to know where I lived and where I stayed, so I told them to come over. And did they spend a lot of time on that visit? I think they just stopped by probably an hour or so. They might have been somewhere. I don't know. Do you recall what they did in your house? I showed them around, and I got a small basketball court, so we probably shot basketball. Just, you know, a pool table. That's about it. And did they continue to call you after that first visit to your home? Yes. And who, when I say, they? Your Honor, I'm going to. That's why I was going to object. I asked the wrong question. Did any member of the Arvizo family call you after that first visit to your home? Gavin. Gavin called. Okay. Did he call you a lot between the first visit to your home and the second visit to your home? Yes. Counsel, I need to stop a couple minutes early because there's an issue, so would this be a good point? Yes, Your Honor. All right, I'll excuse the jury, and we'll see you tomorrow morning at 8.30. And Mr. Tucker, you may step down. All right, I understood you had an issue, Mr. Snedden. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you very much for accommodating me. What I was going to ask the court, if the court recalls, during the course of the testimony of the trial, Detective Bonner, he indicated in his testimony that we had obtained from the telephone company not only the subscriber information for Mr. Garrigus, but also had obtained the telephone records for Mr. Garrigus, but that those records had not been looked at and would remain sealed. In light of Mr. Garrigus's testimony in the courtroom last week and the waiver of the attorney-client privilege, we are now requesting the court for authorization for us to look into those telephone records with regard to the communications between Mr. Garrigus, Mr. Miller and other members of the indicted, the mentioned co-conspirators in the indictment. So I'm asking the court's permission for us to be able to do that now. Wish to be heard? Well, just briefly, may I? Sure. It's a little late in the game to do this, but aside from that issue, I also see there being an issue about phone records of a law firm involving other confidential matters. It's, that's not necessarily our issue per se, but since Mr. Garrigus isn't here, I think it's fair to say, as an officer of the court, that that would be an issue. How would you propose to review the records? Or do you agree there's an attorney-client privilege involved? No, there's nothing confidential in the communications. It's a telephone conversation. I don't think there would be a problem, because we're only looking for specific numbers that we already have as evidence in this case, and those would be the only numbers we would be looking at. So you'll just look at the... We're not fishing for new information. We're fishing. We're not fishing at all. But we're only looking for those numbers that have already been put in evidence in this case, Your Honor. And I object the district attorney is fishing. Maybe that's where I wanted to be. It was a Freudian slip. All right, I'll order them released with the proviso that you only look for the numbers that have been mentioned and you not look to see what other numbers there are. Yes, Your Honor. One other minor matter. I just wanted to let you know, consistent with our conversation in chambers, that I anticipate the defense will be finished tomorrow morning sometime. We will have witnesses ready to go tomorrow. I cannot guarantee to the court that we will have a whole day, though, because we have at least five or six people coming from Los Angeles, some of which had previous commitments, but I will tell the court we should be done on Thursday. So I wanted to let you know that, and I think that's what I told you right from the get-go, and we've done what we can. Okay. Your Honor, I just have. I know you want to go. I have one question. You know I want to go? Do I look anxious to you? 
The fact that you were jumping out of your chair was circumstantial evidence. Your Honor, with regard to the records, I'm just a little unclear. I understand you've resolved the privilege issue, but we should also have the records. I'm not interested in looking at anybody else's records, but if they're going to look at the records, we should have the records, so we can see if there's some information that's beneficial to the defense. And I don't know how the court would propose to do that. Well, I think I'll let them look at them, and then you can follow. The problem really arises because of the late waiver of the attorney-client privilege by Mr. Jackson with Mr. Garrigus. So, we had all of those protective records. So I think the, I'll just let them look at them first, and when they're through they'll give them to you. I don't mind making a copy for them, if the court would authorize me to do that. I would be more than glad to do that this afternoon, your honor. All right, and both sides are under the same order to only look for the numbers that are in evidence, and neither side is to reveal any other numbers to anybody. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you. Is this, you know, I'm going by the list you gave me, and by the list you gave me, this would not be your last witness. Is this your last witness? This would be our last witness. This is your last witness? Yes. So the other name that was there, you're not. There was another name that's. They can't hear you in the back. This is our last witness. So this is the last witness? Yes. All right, see you tomorrow morning. Thank you. Notice how slowly I'm leaving.